This video demonstrates object-oriented software design using UML. The Unified Modeling Language is the de facto notation for doing object-oriented design. It's supported by a variety of tools. We'll be using Quick UML, which runs on Mac or Windows and implements a core set of the UML notation. If you need access to the full notation, use Mac AD on Mac OS X or Win AD on Windows. We'll start by launching the Quick UML application and then select an existing project from disk. Our project is presented within a tabbed window. We see we have a set of use case descriptions. Each name description implements one narrative of how the external world interacts with our system. We can have one or more class diagrams. Class diagrams show the static structure of object-oriented classes. We can have a set of sequence diagrams. Each sequence diagram shows the interaction between a small subset of those classes to implement one particular mechanism within design. As we draw our diagrams, a data dictionary is automatically constructed for us that holds all the detailed information behind the diagram. And we can use the information from within our model to generate code files which can be navigated through, edited, and viewed with the uh, code panel. So that's the basic concepts of how a QuickUML project is presented within the QuickUML modeling tool. To create a new project in QuickUML, just click on the New Project button. We see we have a set of panels at the top that we can select to go to a specific part of that project. For example, let's say we wanted to create a new use case description. So we type at the top the name of the use case and a textual narrative of how the external world interacts with the system that we're designing. To add our second use case description, we click the new button and start typing. Okay, now we see we have two separate use case descriptions which we can navigate to by just clicking on its name on the left hand side of the window. Let's go ahead and save our project to disk. So we'll give it a name and the location that we want to save it. And we can now close our project and reopen it by just uh, double clicking on its name. As we document the individual use cases, we'll be defining how the external world interacts with the software system that we're designing. Eventually, we'll create diagrams to design the software and code files that actually implement the software, and we can link the individual use case entries to those other deliverables. Now let's take a look at the basics behind diagrams. In the class model panel, we can create a set of named diagrams. For example, here's a diagram which we can give it a name. We can give it a number, the size of the diagram. For example, if we wanted uh, two pages horizontally and vertically to have a little bit more of a drawing surface to work with. Uh, we can create additional diagrams. Here's a second diagram. And here's a third diagram. Here we see the various diagrams within our project that we're developing. If we wanted to create objects on the diagram, we would select a tool from the palette on the left-hand side. For example, if we wanted to create a caption on the diagram, we would click and then start typing some text. and various other properties within that object that we're creating. If we wanted to create a class on the diagram, we would click the class tool and give the class a name. Later you'll see how you can partition objects into different namespaces. That's a grouping mechanism that can flow throughout the entire design process and you can define what kind of class it is, give it various properties. So let's create a second class. 
and we'll link those two classes with a relationship. And in this case, we'll show that class one inherits the properties of class two. Let's change the name of that to class one. As we're drawing information on the diagrams, the details of that are stored within our data dictionary. Now let's define some attributes for this class. For the selected class, we can click the details button and define a set of attributes. We can define some operations. So we use tools on the palette to create objects on the diagram and link them with relationship lines. Uh, we can create or delete individually named diagrams using the icons at the bottom. For example, if we wanted to go to our uh, second diagram that we created and add a class to that, we could just select an existing class that we had already created and now we see all the information is presented because it's using this information that was defined in the dictionary as we define our diagrams. So for example, if we go to the dictionary panel, we can see we have a single namespace defined so far with two classes in it. For class one, we can see it has a set of attributes and a set of operations and eventually uh, we'll be able to generate code files and have references to code files and such. All that information then gets stored in the data dictionary. Let's go ahead and save and close our project and we'll take a look at an existing pre-built example. This project shows the class design of a simple drawing tool. Each box represents a named class with a set of blue attributes and green operations. For example, we see that this uh, drawing tool presents a window with the T window class. The window has a palette of tools for drawing objects on a diagram. You'll be able to draw t box and circle shapes on the diagram and that information is stored within a list contained by a document that can be saved to disk. So this is the basic uh, set of classes used to design that simple drawing tool. We also have a set of object diagrams. In this case, we have a, a sequence diagram for each of the design mechanisms within our project. For example, a collection of instantiated classes can work together by one object calling an operation within another object and the flow going from top to bottom shows the interaction of that set of instantiated classes to implement one particular mechanism within the design. And here you can see we have a number of named sequence diagrams. If we double click on a class with the selection tool, we can bring up the uh, class properties dialog where we can name the class or bring up its details dialog where we, where we can define specific details about that class. For example, we can see the T-shaped class. Uh, we're going to assign it to a specific programming language and we can look within that, uh, those details to see that there are three attributes. Each attribute we can double click and define specific language specific details for that attribute or likewise for a particular operation. Okay, so we've seen uh, we have a dialog to define the class itself, its attributes, operations, and specific details for those. Once we've done that, we may want to generate some source code. We can do that by clicking on the code button. Let's generate code for a couple of these different classes. So each time we select a class, click the button, and it generates a code file. For example, here's the individual code files we've just got generated. And if we wanted to actually look at the source code that we've generated, for example, we would just select the class and click the code button and it would bring up the actual source code that was generated from our design.
Now that we've seen the basic concepts behind drawing diagrams, adding detailed information, and generating code files, let's look at some of the uh, navigation reporting capabilities. For example, if we look at a specific use case entry, uh, we can click on uh, one of the reference lines and go to the associated document. That could be a class diagram, a sequence diagram, a code file, or a foreign document. We also, from the report menu, can list out dictionary information to a text file that can be shared with other tools or list out a code specification file for use by an implementation uh, programmer. Let's take a look at the uh, document defaults dialog for a project. There you can uh, set up some of the default options for the various uh, panels within the project. For ex example, on the class model panel, you can show what class members are shown on the diagram, the color scheme used, and how much detailed information like data types and uh, operation signatures and such are presented on the diagram. You can do uh, some other uh, default options for the object panel or for a specific selected language as well. In this video we've seen how to create use case descriptions class models, and sequence style object models using QuickUML. You can also use QuickUML to create package diagrams, composite structure, and component diagrams. If you need to support the full 14 diagram notation within the UML notation, you'll want to use a tool like Mac AD on a Mac OS X computer or Win AD on Windows. There's also some companion tools that can be used in conjunction with QuickUML. For example, the Mac Translator or Win Translator tool scans existing source code and extracts the information out to a text file. That dictionary entry list can then be imported into QuickUML to auto-generate a set of class diagrams. You can also use QuickCRC as a front end to QuickUML. For example, QuickCRC implements CRC cards in design scenarios. That information can be exported from QuickCRC and then imported directly into QuickUML to auto-generate your UML class diagrams. There's a video on our website, www.excelsoftware.com, to show how to use QuickCRC for our CRC cards and design scenarios and how you can export that information and import it directly into QuickUML to create your starting point for your UML design.